Alrighty, yo, what is going on? Everybody, it's your boy Mr. DDG94 back with another reaction video. Today, we're finna react to Top 10 Most Criminally Misunderstood Animals. Admins by uh, Casual Geographics. It's time we get our animal education on. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Can recognize their caretakers and show affection. Will bond with certain individuals and follow them around. Will often bring someone an object and play tug of war. Gentle, inquisitive, and very intelligent. You'd think all this was from someone describing their dog. Actually, these quotes are all from people talking about vultures. The Jurassic size graveyard griefing alopecia pigeon actually has the personality of an imprinted puppy. You might not know that, because most times people see one, it's either thousands of feet above the earth looking for death or on the ground feeding off it. Truth is, the vulture just might be the most generationally misunderstood bird, and in the spirit of Earth Day, I'm gonna be talking about the top 10 most maligned and honestly reputationally screwed over animals. In my biased opinion. You can't please everyone, but I like my list, so let's get into it. Starting off, it's not hard to see how vultures got done dirty. It's pretty hard to earn public favor when you dive bowels deep in a bloated buffalo for a living. Then you add the fact that they'll leak liquid nasty all over their legs to stay cool, projectile vomit in self-defense, and in a world of pretty privilege, vultures have a homely handicap. But anyone who's worked with them will swear by how smart they are. They're arguably the smartest birds that aren't corvids or parrots, and they're part of the exclusive group of animals able to make and use tools, with Egyptian vultures using a rock to have an ostracized omelet. And yeah, get on their good side, it's like having a lap dog with wings. Apollo was a turkey vulture who apparently caught feelings for her caretaker Dave. They're also smart enough for a vulture vendetta to be a real thing. But what makes them underrated it is just how much worse our quality of life would be without it. Botulinum toxins is the deadliest natural substance known to man, and vultures eat it like candy. Vultures can also tank tuberculosis, anthrax, and even the bubonic plague. Folks associate them with death and disease, but that's exactly what they help prevent. And if you want to know what happens when you avoid vultures, look no further than India. With about a 99% loss, vultures in India suffered one of the worst bird blights in history, mostly thanks to a drug given to cattle that also caused kidney failure in the feathery coffins. And with less of nature's cleanup crew taking care of expired bodies, the number of feral dogs went up, and so did cases of rabies. And if you remember my Halloween video, a rise in rabies might be the biggest jihad to the human race. But that's not the only social work vultures offer for free. The turkey vulture's nose is so OP, they've actually been used to help find gas leaks with engineers putting special chemicals in pipes. And with them being more corpse happy than a necro in a morgue, many places rely on vultures as alarms against poaching activity. Unfortunately, the poachers started to catch on and have been murking the snitch tweeties by the hundreds, even the ones that are endangered. Worst part is, they're pretty easy targets because it's hard to hide when you're part time in the sky and there's no witness protection for a sewer stork. Pretty easy to victimize when you're vulnerable and easy to track, and these are vultures we're talking about. Nothing about being a vulture is risk free, that's why the condor nearly got wiped off the census. But, in a W from Humanity, conservation efforts help bring the big bird back from the brink. Hopefully people start to come around to vultures. Anything that chill with Capybara can't be that bad. Just too bad you can't say that about number 9. The Grim Reaper once released a gang of guppies into the Amazon and made it our problem. Or at least that's what you would think from how much the media gets on them. You've probably heard that piranhas can undress a cow down to the bones in minutes, and that skinny dipping in a pool of piranhas is one way to get blacklisted from breathing. Truth is, these fish felons are mostly scavengers, and when you do see one with an expired body, they're usually not the cause, but a symptom. They don't go out of their way to homicide humans. Most attacks involve people either splashing around like prey or getting way too close to a feeding frenzy. But they're basically the bees of water. They don't want smoke, quite the opposite. For all that face, piranhas are naturally timid and scare easy. So much that you actually have to give them places to hide in an aquarium because of just how neurotic they are. Also, they're not strictly meat. They'll also eat fruits, they'll eat seeds, leaves. There's even a type that eats mostly river reeds. But that wouldn't really make a good movie, now would it? Now, I'm not gonna sit here and act like they're not capable of mass destruction, but their PRT really did them filth. Jeremy Wade sat in a pool of allegedly trigger happy piranhas and didn't even get touched. And the whole cow story came from a Theodore Roosevelt hunting expedition where he saw it happen. The catch is, the guys wanted to impress the president because who wouldn't? So they actually netted off a section of the river and started the fish in it for a week, only to feed them with a cow while Roosevelt was watching. And just like the cow, the piranha's reputation never recovered. Oh Sometimes all it takes is one incident to royally screw over an animal. Something next on the list knows all too well. Let's just get this out of the way. There are some deaths where you never forget where you were the moment you found out. For me, that's Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, and of course, Khaki Animal Jesus, aka Steve Irwin. And many have had smoke for staying right kind three. ever since. But before you go wage war on a water waffle first, we gotta talk about just what went down. For one, Steve Irwin got struck directly in the heart, causing massive bleeding. He also never traveled with anti-venom, because anti-venom was anti-Irwin. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, because it wasn't even the venom that did it. Again, it was the bleeding. Stingray venom isn't even all that fatal. And at the time, it was only the second reported stingray-related death in Australia since 1945. It took over for an hour for him to get to emergency workers, but again, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. The point is, literally everything that could have possibly went wrong, went wrong. Like piranhas, stingrays are what a New Yorker might call a scary ad that would rather run away than run a fade. I went to the Cayman Islands a couple of months ago and visited Stingray City, and as someone religiously terrified of the ocean, I can tell you, the crave of the coast is in fact chill like that. Pro tip, if you're ever walking around stingrays, do the stingray shuffle. You're just gonna want to drag your feet. Basically, you don't want them to leave the floor in case RNG makes you turn a rain to a welcome mat. Other than that, unless you're a crab or a fish, you really don't have much to worry about. Besides, let's not act like Steve Irwin, the same man that took a love bite from a cobra and said sorry to the snake, isn't somewhere in the afterlife eternally apologizing to the stingray for spooking him. Stingrays have been misunderstood ever since, but we can drop the vendetta. If you know anything about Steve, that's exactly what he would have wanted. 
Yeah, I'm really gonna have to explain putting Dolphins here. Okay, well, I feel like this weird thing happened where we went from Free Willy to finding out Dolphins take that title seriously. <laughs> so much that we ended up overcorrecting. And I personally and publicly talked endless amounts of shit. Don't get me wrong, the facts I said, I'll say again, I'll say it with my chest. But me calling them water Weinsteins or homicidal hot dogs or a blowhole bandit, nah, that's actually still crazy. But that's just me anthropomorphizing. I don't actually think they're evil. It's fun to treat them like humans, but they're still just wild animals doing what comes naturally. It's just that what comes naturally often involves them naturally. Actually, I should never mind. Look, with intelligent animals, there's always gonna be duality, and I don't even need to say it. I just have to show you these two articles. But dolphins can be wholesome too. Like the same way parents will baby talk a toddler, mother dolphins actually do with their calves. They'll also sing to their baby before it's even born to teach them to recognize the sound of its mother's voice. We also found out that dolphins in a pod will often go out of their way to make less noise so to not confuse the calf in the oven. And when it's out, being a helicopter parent means mama dolphin won't sleep for up to a month straight. There's also decent evidence that dolphins get excited around pregnant women because they can detect the fetus and understand the implication of new life. And of course, there are stories of dolphins saving people from drowning and sharks. Hey man, I'm not going soft. I'm still going to get my jokes off whenever I can. I just feel like because they're so smart, people make a mistake of holding them to human standards, which is pretty unfair considering a lot of humans don't even reach those. Dolphins aren't Disney characters or the spawn of Satan. They're just... They're just them. And as a final Thanks. boss of dolphins, you can go ahead and put orcas in that too. The greatest trick squirrels ever pulled was convincing the world they're just whimsical, nut-loving creatures. When they're actually rodent psychopaths profiting off pretty privilege. They'll eat things like baby birds, baby bunnies, and even snakes. Red squirrels are also part-time cannibals, with males that'll seek and destroy any pups, only to get with the mother of the kids they just murked. Let's not forget that time a group of squirrels dismembered a dog for barking too loud. Also, hey, the yo. number of squirrels with manslaughter charges is higher than you think. It's estimated that chew happy bushtails cause up to 30,000 fires a year, not only costing millions in damage, but likely barbecuing human collateral in the process. There was even a time a squirrel damaged the electrical system of a complex with NASDAQ, freezing computers, and crippling the market for over an hour. Damn. That wouldn't be the last time, in fact, one did the exact same thing seven years later. Now, I know I'm doing the squirrels, but I just admitted I've done the dog in my defense, I have a bias. I almost got jumped by a pack of squirrels in Manhattan, and that was one half of a sandwich I never got back. Moral of the story, there's a reason the smartest man in the universe immediately took a knee in the face of the Acorn Mafia. And here you have another case of animal gaslight. Pigs only get the reputation of being dirty because we keep them in filth. In reality, pigs are pretty clean, and when they have a choice, they'll refuse to poop anywhere near where they eat. Pigs are arguably smarter than cats and dogs, and most experts say they're more trainable too. They somewhat passed the mirror test, and some were even taught to play video games. In 98, Lulu the Pop Ellie saved her owner from a near fatal heart attack by rushing out into the road and playing dead until she could get someone's attention and lead them back home. I also feel like we forget how well pigs did without us, and from the Red River Hog of the Congo, to the Pygmy Hog of India, to the bearded Borneo pig, the swine smart enough and adaptable enough to live anywhere. On a dolphin type beat, mother pigs will often sing to their piglets while nursing, and speaking of piglets, they can recognize their name at only two weeks old. You can argue pigs are everything we value in an animal. They're intelligent, they're affectionate, they're super trainable. Because they were bred for food, they got big screwed. Look, I'm not gonna virtue signal. You can give me 101 facts on cows, I'll probably still be out here door dashing McDonald's. But it's pretty criminal what we did to the pigs PR. Put it this way, this guy would have been by far the smartest character in the barnyard. They deserve way better than what they've gotten, and I'm not saying you have to give up bacon. All I'm gonna say is, according to cannibals, the closest tasting thing to human meat is pork. I'm gonna I'm let y'all meditate on that. Ain't nothing wrong with the pork. Rats are number four, and almost entirely because they got blamed for the bubonic plague when the main carrier of the lice and fleas that caused it was likely humans themselves. My theory is rats are found in cities, and cities are usually dirty, so we often see all rats as dirty. In reality, rats are constantly cleaning themselves. In fact, one of the ways they bond is by grooming each other. It's called allegrooming. Speaking of bonds, rats can often form emotional ones with humans, and anyone who's had a rat will tell you. At some point, they'll try to groom you like you're a giant rat. Rats can also provide a public service, with many African poached rats actually being trained to sniff out tuberculosis. The same species has been used to sniff out hidden landmines, and not only can they cover the ground in 20 minutes, that would take a trained human days. They can obviously walk across the mines without going back to ground zero. Magawa, the explosive tech rat, earned a gold medal after sussing out 100 mines in Cambodia and clearing 225,000 square feet of land. He's not the only heroic rodent. There are several stories of rats saving owners from house fires where they easily could have hightailed it. You know, if it wasn't for the bad PR, rats just might be the top pet. The only bad side with them is they have short lifespans and your feelings will get hurt. No, I'm good on rats. Don't you know, the fact that, that this is the only animal that needed a trigger warning is enough to put spiders at third. Now, I'm not going to downplay arachnophobia like I didn't use to backpedal the pigeons, but spiders are a great example of bark being way worse than their bite. Take the tarantula, they're like the granddaddy of arachnid anxiety, but not only is their venom about as bad as a bee sting, not only are they so fragile they can literally explode if they fall a couple feet. Unlike bees, there's no record of tarantula venom terminating a person. Of course, there's thousands of types of tarantulas, and some are more of a geod than others. But then you have the ones that adopt frogs as nannies, with the frog eating all the insects that could grieve the spider's eggs, and the frog getting an eight legged bodyguard. Truth is, there's about 50,000 species of spiders to earth, and less than a tenth of a percent of them are a legitimate threat to your life. And that doesn't include the smallest spider in the world, the Patu de Gua, or jumping spiders, which are literally small enough to wear water as a hat. And when you add the fact that they basically have paws to help them walk vertical, and that some like the wolf spider can purr, are spiders not just the cats of insects? Oh my bad, arachnids. According to the CDC, the number of people murked by spiders a year is seven. 
You're more likely to get slapped by a vindictive vending machine. Okay, you're not impressed. How about this? Spiders eat up to 800 million tons of insects that could otherwise destroy crops. If Thanos had beef with spiders, not only would there be way less food, it would be stupid expensive. You can thank spiders for a 4 for 4 not setting you back for 100. Not to mention all the pesticides we need to stay alive when I ironically turn the earth into a disaster movie. Look, I'm not saying you gotta cave for spiders, I know I'm biased. In fact, bias is probably why the next animal's number two. I love Lion King, but they'll forever get smoked for convincing an entire generation that hyenas are, well, that. Hyenas got profiled as scavengers when up to 95% of what they eat is something they can get credit for killing. Guess like goes crazy because the literal Lion King poaches more food from hyenas than hyenas hoe lions. And since the Laugh Happy Vice Trap eats every part of an animal, like land vultures, the world would be a much nastier place without the meerkat on the bulk. Everyone wanna shit on the garbage man until he quits and leaves you with the shit. But honestly, it's the stupid part that gets me heated. In experiments, spotted hyenas actually perform better in cooperative problem solving tests than chimpanzees. You know, the chainsaw with thumbs we share 98% of our DNA with? Hyenas are way smarter than they get credit for. Take Waffles, for example. Waffles was a lady hyena in a clan, and at the very bottom of it, no less. And in just a year, she went from the dirt under the ladder to the alpha at the very top, and she didn't even have to fight for it. All she needed was the power of friendship. Now, I'm serious. Waffles slowly made the right friends, built alliances with other low ranks, earned favor with some of the higher ups, and before the ones at the top could even realize it, the hyena named Waffles had caused what scientists would later refer to as the syrup rising. And you'd think she'd go power hungry when she got the throne, but nah, the opposite. She never switched up on the ones that got her there, and there were even times where she helped feed the cubs of low status moms. Cause hyena hierarchy is more about social networking and climbing the corporate ladder than just running fades all day. See, you wouldn't know that from just watching Lion King, and while some are starting to come around to this giant maligned mongoose, one movie ruined the last animal's rep damn near permanently. There was no way sharks weren't getting the number one spot, and really, any way you look at it, we did this overgrown grief guppy grimy. How about the fact that the shark's KD ratio is about 10 a year to the 100 million that get murked by people? What about the fact that a coconut to the dome or a bathtub accident is way more likely to flatline you than a shark? There's the fact that we have over 500 species of them, but really only about four are seen as legitimately dangerous, so I don't blame you for folding the great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, and the underrated oceanic white tip. But this is a shark, and it's unproblematic to anything that isn't plankton. Same thing with the basking, aka Kirby shark, which is really just a giant pacifist. Then you got white tip reef sharks that are not only non aggressive, they cuddle each other to sleep. And you can't forget the lemon shark being the golden retriever of the sea that'll often form bonds with divers. Blondie was an eight foot lemon shark that would go up to divers, but the only thing she'd be hunting for is attention and affection. And while yeah, I'm not exactly a huge fan of this, at the end of the day, I wouldn't want a shark in my living room. You can't be mad when you go into theirs. Cause if there's one thing you should take from this video, calling a shark infested waters is really wild disrespectful. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother, and maybe give guppies a break. I promise you lone sharks end way more lives. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. We know it. We know. Hey yo. Sí. Ahora venga, a volar. ¿Eh? Ahí. Alrighty, but that's just gonna about do it for this one, man. Uh very interesting video. I guess we could say a lot of them are under misunderstood, but I'm still not fucking with <laughs> bro I don't care what you say brother I don't care what you say brother I ain't fucking with no spiders I ain't fucking with no hyenas and I for damn sure ain't fucking with no sharks sharks is my biggest phobia right now sharks is my biggest fucking phobia cause that's water I'm Look at the color of my skin. You think I know how to swim? I'm, I barely know how to swim. Barely. Okay? Barely. <laughs> so, shit. I, 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 I ain't fucking with it. I ain't fucking with it. I ain't fucking with it. All right? Anyways, I'm just going to do it for this one. I'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs> Till then, peace out.